Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, two killed in fire in Merrimack home. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Fire at 7 Gale Road in Merrimack was reported around 12.30 in the morning in an unusual manner. station is just up the road from here, and a citizen stopped and knocked on the, um, the door of the station and said he smelled heavy smoke in the area. Firefighters began to investigate and could see a glow in the darkness that led them to the fire. The first firefighters found heavy fire coming from the single-family residence. A call went out for additional personnel fire was quickly knocked down. As soon as they knocked that fire down, they did a primary and secondary search of the first and second, uh, first floor in the basement. That's when they discovered two people inside the home. One of the victims was located in the bedroom. The second one was located uh, in the uh, kitchen area by a slider. Firefighters applied CPR to the victims, described as a couple in their 80s, but they were unable to revive them and they were pronounced dead at the scene. The state fire marshal's office is leading the investigation Deputy State Fire Marshal says they do have some things to go on as they search for how the fire began. It does appear to be uh, a room and contents fire, so we are very hopeful that we are going to be able to determine both the origin and the cause. Meantime, the fire chief in Merrimack says a situation like this hits even veteran firefighters hard. Take an oath to protect the citizens from the community where you work, and you work very hard to uh, do that, and when this happens, it hits all of us. One of the things the state fire marshal's office is looking at is whether or not the home had working smoke detectors. The victims' names are expected to be released once the autopsies are complete. Reporting live in Merrimack, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man accused of shooting Falmouth officers arraigned from hospital. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. That's right, the press conference just wrapping up moments ago. That young man in big trouble with the law for allegedly shooting those two police officers who are luckily going to be okay. Now, just moments ago, there was a press conference with the Falmouth police chief and the Boston police chief. You know, interestingly, the Boston police chief, uh, William Gross, or superintendent in chief, excuse me, rather, talked a lot about this is a fight between good and evil, the good being the police officers doing the work every day out in our streets, protecting men and women out there. Uh, and earlier, uh, Chief Dunn said this has been a real toll on his office the last couple of days, but they are staying strong. Here's what he had to say. Two officers that were involved in this incident, they're so brave, everything they've been through. And I also want to thank my entire department for the professionalism that they've exhibited through this whole incident. Now, the shooting happened on Friday noon when Malik Koval allegedly shot those two Falmouth police officers, Ryan Moore and Donald D. Miranda, both gentlemen, again, going to be okay. But right now, Koval in the hospital here at Brigham and Women facing lots and lots of serious charges from assault to murder, assault and battery and police officers and several others. He's being held for a dangerousness hearing. Now, interestingly enough, um, he did look over at the cameras and say, is this live? A reporter said yes. And then he threw up a sign called 
throw into the threes. That is a sign that is very controversial. It means either solidarity in Boston or it's a gang symbol. So there's a lot of talk right now amongst the, the media community and also the police community wondering what he meant when he did that, but he did not and understand he said to a judge the charges. So again, Malik Koval, the young man who is being charged with shooting two Falmouth police officers arraigned moments ago. Coming up, of course, later on, we'll have a lot more on this developing story. Reporting live in Boston, Kelly O'Hara, WCBB, News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. E. coli closes Highland Lake Beach and Bridgeton. Let's take a listen to the video from WMKW News 8 Maine. On a sunny summer day, Highland Lake Beach is usually packed. No, I had no idea. Tuesday, nearly empty, except for a few kayakers and boaters. I just came to the boat dock. I didn't realize that the swimming part of the beach was closed. Kim Fatello and her friends could use the boat launch, and they weren't alone on the rest of the lake. But tests showing high E. coli levels right along the beach closed that area for swimming. Town manager Robert Peabody says they can't be sure what caused the high E. coli levels, but knows why they caught it. The neurovirus outbreak that we had earlier this month uh, kind of put up a flag for us. In early July, nearly 100 people got sick from a norovirus outbreak at Woods Pond Beach. So they started testing the swimming areas once a week. If two tests show concerning levels, they'll close the beach and order a third. Your results can vary greatly from day to day. Here at Highland Lake Beach, no illnesses were reported, but they suspect a common visitor could be a culprit. We've had a problem at this particular beach with, with ducks. And they're cute, so people feed them, and that encourages them to continue to, to hang around the beach area. So we do our best to discourage that. The town manager says they expect to release the results of the latest E. coli testing by tomorrow afternoon. In Bridgeton, Joe Glauber, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And let's take a look at that U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Tuesday evening. And here's a look at the U.S. stock market for all of you. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Your Nasdaq closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. CNBC IQ 100 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the red and went down. U.S. 10-year closed in the red and went down. Euro slash USD closed in the red and went down. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow rises more than 100 points to close out best month for stocks since January. Let's take a listen to the video from CNBC. Trading CME Group futures at Interactive Brokers puts you in command. With low-cost trades and 24-hour direct access to 120 global exchanges, opportunity is at your fingertips. And all from one account. Stay ahead of the curve with Interactive Brokers and CME Group futures. Open here, three to one advancing to declining. What's it worth to say the U.S. and China are back in negotiations, even if it's not official? It's about 10 points on the S&P, 2808. Then we went right to 2818. Pretty much where we've been. The usual tariff stories uh, moved. Semiconductors, industrials, tech. 
consumer discretionary materials, transports are having a good time of it. We have a modest rally, I would say modest in FANG, but a lot of the damage has been done. We've been talking about the, the problems with FANG, but it's really, to take a look at Netflix and Facebook, they're down 20% uh, from their recent highs, Amazon Alphabet. Apple, not down nearly as much, Apple, of course, tonight, but I've been saying this for days, many, many tech stocks are down 20% or more from the 52-week highs, a lot of them hit highs in June, if you look at some of the internet content guys, like Snap, and Twitter, and Yelp, and eBay, look, the, the, these guys have been really tough this year, they've had a hard time of it, some of the big data, the software names, and enterprise names, your Splunks, and uh, Hortonworks and Lassian, they're down rather noticeably, hit highs several months ago. The enterprise names like Workday are also weak. I just want to point out that if you include the tariff and the higher costs, industrials have not had a good year at all either. That's 23% uh, down uh, that we've seen for American Airlines. Uh, Cummins, in Illinois Tours, Rand Caterpillar, all talked about higher costs. These are the guys who are hit one way or another uh, by those tariff costs or by higher costs in the case of American Airlines here. Elsewhere, uh, the guys who talked about Procter & Gamble, I'll make it very simple. You, this is what low growth looks like, low organic growth. They were talking 2 to 3% organic growth, healthcare, grooming. Guys are not shaving as much. They actually said that. Avian family down about 2%. Procter & Gamble, and showing this, this low growth, down 12% so far this year. That's Procter & Gamble down 12%. Finally, where exactly are we? People keep asking me uh, in, right now with this whole value and growth story. We're, there is a rotation going on, but we're not sure how strong it is. Boy, I get assaulted on the street from the bulls. Stop talking about value, Bob. It's a loser. You know it's a loser. Growth's going to come back. We get these pullbacks every six months in growth, and they all come back. There's still a lot of bulls in growth. Q2 is strong. Q3 consensus holding. And the valuations still reasonable for 2019. Just off the highs now, up 100 points. Carl, back to you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And again, stocks rose on Tuesday after a report said the U.S. and China are seeking talks to defuse an escalating trade conflict between the two countries. Equalities are also posted their biggest monthly gains since the start of the year. Manafort Jerry pulled from region that voted heavily against Trump. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. The 12 person jury that will decide the fate of former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort has been seated. And Paul Manafort has done an amazing job. He's here someplace. Where's Paul? That jury, six men and six women. Four alternates are also on deck. They'll soon hear prosecutors make the case against Manafort for tax evasion and bank fraud, all part of the first criminal trial stemming from special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. This is going to be the paper trail that they follow to follow what Paul Manafort was doing with the money, tax issues. It's a paper case. Manafort has pleaded not guilty to 18 counts of financial crimes. That includes allegations he laundered at least $60 million from consulting work he did on behalf of pro-Russian Ukrainian politicians, then funneled those funds through offshore accounts. Prosecutors say as a result, he lived a life of luxury. What the trial likely won't focus on, Russia or collusion a key component of Mueller's investigation. The trial's just beginning, but remember, it has nothing to do with the campaign. Ahead of the trial, the president's attorney told CNN Manafort has no dirt on the president. And he has no information incriminating of the president. I know that for a fact. They can squeeze him. Paul Manafort does not know anything. The judge told the jurors to expect the trial to last three weeks. At this point, it's unclear whether Paul Manafort himself will take the stand during the trial. Arlette Signs, ABC News, Washington. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow with another newscast. 
and I'll see you back here later on this evening for a news report. Good night, everyone. Bye.